my child. Allow me to present his distinction, Don Alhambra de Bolero, the Grand Inquisitor of Spain. <laughs> it was his distinction who so thoughtfully abstracted your infant husband and brought him to Venice. So. This is the little lady who is so unexpectedly called upon to assume the functions of royalty, and a very nice little lady, too. <laughs> Jimp, isn't she? Distinctly, Jimp. Allow me. Naughty temper. N you must, oh, you, <laughs> you must make some allowance. Her Majesty's head is a little turned by her uh, access of dignity. I could have wished that Her Majesty's access of dignity would have turned it in this direction. <laughs> um, uh, un unfortunately, if, if I'm not mistaken, there seems to be little doubt about His Majesty's whereabouts. A doubt to his whereabouts? Well, then we may yet be saved. A doubt? Oh dear, no. No doubt at all. He is here in Venice, plying the modest but picturesque calling of the gondolier. I can give you his address. I see him every day. In the entire annals of our history, there is absolutely no circumstance so entirely free from all manner of doubt of any kind, whatever. Listen, and I'll tell you all about it. I stole the prince and I brought him here and left him gaily prattling with a highly respectable gondolier who promised a royal babe to rear and teach him the trade of a time near with his own beloved Bratling. Both of the babes were strong and stout and considering all things clever. Of that there is no manner of doubt, no probable possible shadow of doubt, no possible doubt whatever. No possible doubt whatever. But owing I'm much disposed to fear to his terrible taste for tippling, that highly respectable gondolier could never declare with a mind sincere which of the two was his offspring dear and which the royal stripling, which was which he could never make out despite his best endeavor. Of that there is no manner of doubt, no probable possible shadow of doubt, no possible doubt whatever. No possible doubt whatever. Time sped, and when at the end of the year I sought that infant cherished, that highly respectable gondolier was lying a corpse on his humble bier, I dropped a grand inquisitor's tear. <laughs> that gondolier had perished. A taste for drink combined with gout had doubled him up forever. Of that there is no manner of doubt, no probable possible shadow of doubt, no possible doubt whatever. No possible, no possible doubt, doubt whatever. whatever. The children followed that old career, that statement can't be parried, of a highly respectable gondolier, well, one of the two who will soon be here. But which of the two, it is not quite clear, is the royal prince you married? Search in and out and round about, and you'll discover never a tale so free from every doubt, or probable possible shadow of doubt, or possible doubt whatever. A tale so free from every doubt, or probable possible shadow of doubt, or possible doubt, whatever. Then do you mean to say that I am married to one of two gondoliers, but it is impossible to say which? Without any doubt of any kind, whatever. But be reassured, the nurse to whom your husband was entrusted is the mother of a musical young man who is such a past master of that delicately modulated instrument. <laughs> he can, without a doubt, establish the king's identity beyond all question. <sighs> But bless my heart, consider my position. I'm the wife of one, that's very clear. But who can tell, except my intuition, which is the prince and which the gondolier? Submit to fate without unseemly wrangle. Such complications frequently occur. 
Life is one closely complicated tangle. Death is the only true unraveler. Try we lifelong, we can never straighten out life's tangle skein. Why should we in vain endeavor guess and guess and guess again? Life's a pudding full of plums. Tears a canker that benumbs. Life's a pudding full of plums. Tears a canker that benumbs. Wherefore waste our elocution on impossible solutions? Life's a pleasant institution. Let us take it as it comes. Let us take it as it comes. Set aside the dull enigma, we shall guess it all too soon. Fair your breeze, a fire of steam, a kind of steam, my daughter. Lest on sorrow we should stop. Hop and skip to fancy spittle, hands are crossing down the middle. Life's perhaps the only beetle that we shrink from giving up. Life's perhaps the only beetle that we shrink from giving up. Then take it as it comes, take it as it comes. String the lyre, fill the cup, lest on sorrow we should stop. <laughs>